Hello, welcome back to Metalhead Nation Garage. I'm Chris, your host, and bringing you to rock news today. Hey, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hey, moving on, Foo Fighters finally making a statement stating that they're going to continue uh, with the band. Uh, they haven't announced a drummer yet. That's yet to come. But uh, they said they would be a different band going forward, which uh, I can see that. Taylor was a big part of it. I mean, it seemed like him and, and Dave was the front people of the band. Uh, but uh, I can see that. But uh, kind of interesting. I haven't really heard any names floating around to replace him. Um, so, uh, kind of interesting to see uh, how that's going to come about and uh, in the timeline that they'll announce it and the timeline that they uh, announced, the, you know, to cover the dates that had been canceled. Um, so, interesting. I, I figured they'd carry on, but uh, I'm glad they are. And uh, we'll see uh, what the future brings uh, for uh, the Foo Fighters. Uh, other news... Uh, April Wines, a big 70 band. Actually, I started out in the 60s, 69. Um, one of their members, Miles Goodwin, he's uh, retiring from uh, touring. You know, he said, just getting a little bit much. He said he's still going to be behind the scenes there writing uh, the music for April Wine. He is 74, and uh, due to uh, health issues, uh, he is uh, retiring from touring with the band. Um, you know, golly, uh, April Wine was big. I mean, in the 70s, it was really big. They had some great songs. You know, one of their biggest songs that I liked was I Like to Rock. But, I mean, they, they had some ballads on there, too. Just Between You and Me, uh, Roller, uh, You Could Have Been My Lady, Enough's Enough, you know, uh, Say Hello. I mean, they, they go on. He's a big band in the 70s, uh, 80s, uh, and continued to tour today. Um, April Wine, good, good band, good uh, guitar-heavy band. If you haven't heard it, you young folks out there, man, uh, Spotify April Wine. Let me tell, tell me what you think of them. Uh, uh, really good. Uh, they... Um, yeah, I'd be interested to hear some comments on them um, and, uh, and let me know. Uh, moving on with that, we got to, you know, it's 20 years ago uh, that Cree played the disastrous concert in uh, Chicago. I mean, uh, you know, the lead singer there, he was really, uh, yeah, fighting pain. He, he was doing uh, little substance abuse, uh, Scott Stapp, and... Um, and he really, he really performed terribly. I mean, he wasn't with the music. I mean, if you, you, if you can uh, go on YouTube and get some of that uh, footage from 20 years ago, I mean, he like took naps in between the songs. I mean, he actually just fell on the floor and took a nap. You know, people had to go check on it. He took long breaks. I mean, it was terrible. It was really disastrous. Leading to their breakup, you know, um, but Creed, golly, I mean, this band imploded, and they was really big, and I liked them, they had some great songs there, and, um, you know, uh, seems to be with some of these bands, um, uh, for a lot of them, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, golly, they just, you know, they, they're successful, the pressure of it, I guess, from, Yep, to perform record company, you, you know, even the, you know, band members, you know, you have to, you know, they feel that pressure of keeping up, selling all these albums and stuff. But Creed, back in the day, wow, you know, one last breath, my sacrifice, you know, with arms wide open, hire my own. I mean, the list goes on. It, it really big hits back in, you know, and um, uh, you know, I know there is talk. Uh, about, you know, uh, Creed, you know, a reunion tour. Um, just uh, about a month ago, um, the, um, 
you know, the old Mark Tremonti, you know, he's got a couple bands out there. He did talk about it because he's touring with them bands now over in Europe. But he said, you know, at some time, maybe, maybe there should be a reunion of Creed. He said, but it's just not right right now and that he's not ready to do it. So, uh, uh, so it ain't going to happen right away, but I would think two, three, maybe more than five years, it's going to happen. I think I think they was just too successful, too good of a band. I I really uh, did like the like them uh, of of the bands back in the you know two thousand era. I mean, there wasn't anybody better in Creed, and and the good thing about it is everybody's still around and healthy. I mean, Scott's out uh, touring, you know, Tremonte is, and so why not? I mean, that's that's what it's about. These reunion tours tour all over the world so uh we'll see what the future holds there maybe uh maybe they can announce something in uh, 2023 when they're done touring uh and get back together maybe and maybe a new album who knows uh um uh, and moving on you know to uh some albums that uh supposed to come out in uh 2023 and these are you know some of them are pretty good uh let me know what you think of these. Uh, Rolling Stones, they have recorded some new material. You know, uh, the last single was the 2020 Lost Living in a Ghost Town. Of course, that was about COVID and everything. But they hadn't made enough material for a new album. And uh, it, it looks like, <clears throat> according to Keith Richards, that uh, this is going to happen in 2023. Now, uh, you know... Uh, Charlie Watts is on these sessions, you know, but uh, he may not. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if he'll be on there or not. They're really not saying, but uh, it would be neat if he's on, if he's in there and he he performed on these and, and maybe they're not performed all the way. Maybe they need some more drumming work or whatever. Hopefully, uh, uh, you know, they can uh, save everything uh, that he worked on. That'd be kind of cool. You know, it'd be uh, original members there. Uh putting out a new album, but, uh, and you know, uh, you know, talking about these new albums and stuff, a lot of people, uh, a lot of bands, they really, they really don't like putting out the new music, <clears throat> uh, Guns N' Roses is for one, I know I spoke about before, and some other bands are putting out just, uh, tracks, you know, they may have, uh, eight tracks that they made, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and they are going to release them, you know, like, once a month, they'll release a track, put it out there, you know, the next month, we'll release it, so, and release it all through the year until all of them's done, um, I don't know what the benefit is of that, uh, uh, because albums seem to be selling nowadays, of course, not as much as it was back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, uh, the, but, uh, cause I, I'm just one. I'll, if they if the band puts it out there, I'm gonna get it, whether it be digital or uh, vinyl or, or or CD. So uh, and most of it would be digital because it's easier. You know, I got my Spotify, Amazon accounts, and I can just uh, you know download it. Um, uh, on on with some more new albums may come out. Uh, Robert Plant. Uh, you know, uh, after he after Led Zeppelin. Uh, you know, uh, broke up, uh, or just called it a day, re, you know, say Led Zeppelin retired, uh, you know, he, he did go out on his own, uh, you know, and he's looking at, uh, he, he, uh, putting another album out with the, with his band Sensational Space Shifters, uh, they have 40 different instrumental ideas, uh, back from 2019, everybody, seems like everybody, all the groups, uh, what have you, uh, have uh some you know uh what you call it when the covert was there shut down you know everything was shut down everybody got in the studio and um and you know made some new music and or just got together and worked on you know when they come out the tour just getting the music down because uh as i said um you know when that uh when it opened up from covert i I still go today. We did as soon as them first concerts hit over in Indy, we went and uh, we haven't stopped. And uh, I would tell you, 
except maybe for one, and that would be Corn. But the the band was good. Just the singer wasn't having a good day that day. But uh, and or that tour, they you know they worked on their performance. I mean, it's so good. I mean, uh, I, I remember, you know, when I started going in the seventies and eighties and stuff, sometimes, uh, the performances wasn't, uh, wasn't that great. I mean, uh, uh, the party became, uh, part of the show and, uh, well, that, that has changed after, uh, COVID. You can, you can look out there on YouTube and see some of them and they're, they're good. And, uh, and that's, I think that's what the bands had worked on, you know, because that's part of the, that is their, um, uh, payday now is, uh, big tours, right? Touring out, they, you know, album sales is not what they used to be. So where they make their money is tour and apparel, of course, they'll make some money on that. But uh, interesting to see uh, Robert Plant because he has been pretty busy with Allison Krause and, and stuff. So uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, be interesting. And I did like his solo stuff a little bit. You know, Tall Cool One. I like that uh, song. So uh, he, uh, not bad. Not bad. Look, we'll see how it is. And uh, his voice don't sound bad at all either. So, uh, but uh, moving on. Uh, Another uh, album supposed to come out in 2023, Ace Freely, former guitarist of Kiss, everybody knows. Uh, he is doing, he is going to release an LP in 2023 of all original material. Wow, that, that's pretty good because he likes to do a lot of covers, but uh, all original material for uh, 2023. Uh so, uh, and it's going to be the third entry of the origin covers he, he, he had, you know, it's, uh, um, and we'll see how it is. I mean, I like, I like Ace, uh, he states he's sober. I, I seen him, he opened up for Alice Cooper, uh, in 2022, uh, seen him in the Dayton area there in Ohio and, uh, he's, he was good. I mean, the band he had was good. He was on, I even attended the, uh, the sound check uh, was greatly surprised, and his voice was good. So, uh, and it, and his playing is, is okay. Uh, so, wasn't uh, wasn't that was a good show? So, surprisingly, so I mean, um, you never know about Ace. You don't know what he gets. I mean, these guys uh, go in and out of their substance abuse. So, uh, you never know. And um, moving on. To ZZ Top, which uh, they're going to do a, a new album and uh, coming out in 2023. So interesting for that. I, I like Billy Gibbons. Um, you know, no issues there. No set last year on it. Just said they have material. They can come out and... Uh, in 2023, late 2023, they're saying ZZ Top, look for some new material. And another one coming out in 2023, another band, Aerosmith. Say they have a bunch of material too, back, going back to the 70s, and uh, are looking to put enough on for an LP in 2023. So, uh, interesting. Interesting indeed. I mean, um, no news on, on their lead singer, Tyler, uh, after the Vegas uh, shows canceled. But uh, Joe Perry, he said he has enough material and stuff. Uh, they've been rehearsing some songs and, and here and there. So they, they have materials from the 70s, 80s. And nineties, so uh, I like I seventy stuff, but um, we'll see. I mean, that'd be a it'd be good, be a great surprise from what's going been going on with Aerosmith here in the last couple of years, and see what happens. Hopefully, Joey Kramer's back on them drums. You know, that would be great because uh, I think that that'd be complete. That'd be all original members and and that would be good to do it one more time. Maybe put out a new album and a farewell tour. Uh, and well, let's see what happens. I don't know. I don't know if I ever uh, if I ever will be done. I mean, they they Perry, he's got uh side gigs with Alice Cooper and uh and Johnny Depp, but uh but I mean if a Rolling Stones 
taught us anything. You can tour forever. Them guys are probably, eh, I wouldn't say the oldest out there touring. I'm sure there's some older, but there, there's some of them that play in the stadium are pretty old. And to get back on Rolling Stones, this is a good question, if, if, you know, what you believe, because it's been, you know, in the news for years and uh, stating that on the Stones, they have a band behind the curtain that's playing the song. So, uh, what what do you guys think about that? That is, uh, and and there is some uh, big reporters in the rock business reporting this, uh, stating that hey, the Rolling Stones has a band behind them performing on all the instruments. So, uh, they, you know. Think about that and let me know what you think. I, I mean, it wouldn't be surprising to me. And I really haven't never, you know, I can't watch a long DVD. I mean, I watched them back on our first farewell tour back in the 80s. And uh, and that was enough for me. I seen them. I haven't, I haven't paid attention to them too much late. You know, I like their old stuff, the 70s stuff. You know, I like, you know, they had some in the 60s. But in the 60s, everybody was trying to sound like the Beatles. And the 70s really opened up. And I think for them, too. So I really, I really dug them in the 70s. But. Uh, I haven't sat there and watched a DVD or a YouTube uh, video of it in quite some time, you know. Uh, but that that is the behind the scenes. Reporters say there is a band behind the Rolling Stones that perform on our tour. So I don't know. I'll put that question out to you. What's your thoughts? Put it in the comments below. I'd be interested to see what you guys think or even if you care. You may not care. I'm uh, moving on, moving on to Peter Gabriel. Uh, you know, gosh, I like uh, Peter Gabriel. I like that uh, Sledgehammer album. It's really good. You know, he's a original member of Genesis. It is amazing how Genesis was successful. He left the band. They pulled their drummer up, Phil Collins, to be on vocals and was even more successful. It's uh, amazing, amazing for them, which I didn't see Genesis uh, on their farewell tour, you know, a year, year and a half ago. I did see kind of like uh, videos of um, Phil Collins in like a desk chair out on the stage. He really didn't look good. And I thought, wow, um, I it, that just turned me off. I don't, I don't need to go see that. But um um, excuse me there, uh, Peter Gabriel, but he is uh, announcing a tour and he hopes to release some new music, uh, in 2023, uh, you know, uh, be his first studio effort since 2011, new blood. So, uh, been a long time. So, uh, yeah, all new original material. So, uh, you can't beat that. I like Peter Gabriel. He, uh, brings a different type of, uh, um, uh, musicianship definitely uh for that uh, but big fan of him i think he's really incredible and really talented um another one here golly this is a this is big uh news but i i knew of this um gig i'm going to talk about brian may and eddie van halen uh Brian May revealed that he is going to bring out some material from him and Eddie Eddie from my Starfleet project back in the 80s era. Uh, so that that was big news. And uh, he was, uh, it was called the Starfleet project. So, uh, you know, they have, uh, it's going to be a box set. And they're going to include every take on every song. Along with conversations and, and things of that and the experiment of the sessions. So we'll get to hear some, you know, background uh, musicianship, really. That's what it sounds like, you know, uh, the makings of the song. It sounds really cool. Be really interested, too. Um, you know, uh, golly. And this, you know, on Brian May, this would be the third part of that uh, Gold series. So uh, Eddie Van Halen in the Starfleet Project, you know. Never be heard before material, interviews, uh, the making of the songs, the conversations in the studios. So, uh, wow. I mean, that'd be big if that comes out, uh, I tell you. Um, so, let's let's hope so. Uh, golly, hear some new Eddie Van Halen, kind of newish, I guess. Never heard uh, from the 80s. It'd be uh, fantastic for me being an uh, Eddie fan. Um 
Another one that, you know, uh, this gentleman, he uh, is going to come out with a new album in 2023. He actually retired from uh, touring uh, on the road, and that would be uh, Mick Mars. Uh, you know, he he's had this album in the bank for a while. I know I, I heard about it mid, late summer, mid to late summer uh, last year when they was on tour. Uh, but, uh, he has, uh, an album that will be coming out in 2023. Um, so let's see what this sounds like. He is, and, and the thing about it is, I know I probably talked about this before. He's going to tour with it too. So kind of interesting. Um, uh, you know, uh, their second lead singer, Motley Crue, John Karabi, he was saying <clears throat> he believed Mick was forced out of that band. And he said, until he hears it from Mick, he is saying he's forced out of the band. And he actually did an interview uh, right before uh, Christmas that he was over somewhere Switzerland, somewhere like that. But he's over on vacation, and Mick and his wife uh, lives over in Switzerland or has a house there. And um, he called him up and uh, talked to his wife and uh and he was, you know, asking them. They had a conversation and everything. And they asked to uh, talk to Mick. And he, he couldn't talk at that time, you know. He was, because he was, he was there. He was <clears throat> wanting to talk about that, you know. Uh, is it really true, you know? Did you really just uh, boat on Motley Crue or, you know, or on the touring part of it? Or was he forced out? Because he states back when he was in the band that they bitched about Mick back then, you know saying the guitar riffs or he's playing whatever he had going on you know they wasn't happy with but sounds like um motley crew right tommy and nikki they was probably just uh blowed out of their minds right and um so interesting interesting thought there um uh, moving on to a younger one wolfgang van halen oh wolfie he's going to uh be doing a new album in 2023 and as same as the first one he did, he will be performing all instruments on the album. <clears throat> so uh, be ready for that. I'm sure it'll be good. I thought the, the first one was a, a good album. I was really surprised. It was really good. Um, you know, and, and he was nominated for a Grammy. He didn't win, but uh, it was very successful and it was different uh, than, uh, you know, Van Halen. But, um, you know, that distance carried that, that single he did with, about his dad. So, uh, um, very cool, very interesting in seeing what he has to offer this time around. You know, sometimes uh, that's where you see uh, uh, the true artist is that sophomore album, right? A lot, of, a lot of bands had trouble making that sophomore album. And it, not really trouble. The band liked their music. It is just being on the sales side, right? You know, how it racks up to the first album. And uh, that's, uh, that's it's, they call it the sophomore jinx. So uh, see if we can get that out of the way. And uh, which I, I think he will. He's, uh, he's very talented. Uh, all right, moving on for some more new music here in 2023. Steve Perry making that news. He's uh says he's got a bunch of material to release in 2023. He's hoping for um golly, I you know, I always you know the uh right now it's a uh, journey's 50 year anniversary and stuff. I was I was hoping they'd have him on a couple shows or something or bring the original back, you know, um and you know, who knows who knows what happened there with Journey, but uh, yeah, he uh, he's got enough material to release uh, uh, another album. So we'll see how it is. You know, uh, traces and everything, it was okay, um, but uh, we'll see if it's uh, that same slow. You know, music. Uh, you know, he uh, wrote for his uh, a wife. So uh, we'll see on that. And uh, Neil Young, wow, Neil Young, you know. Uh, been around forever, right? Uh, he is going to release some music in uh, this year, in 2023. You know, he's got some, uh, a flood of, you know, a studio full of, you know, old music, archival music that he uh, 
he he wants to put he wants to put out you know um i don't i don't know it's gonna you know what it'll be like it'd probably be a little of both man there'll probably be some folk music in there be some little bit of rocking you know be a little bit of country who knows what uh neil young will put out there um and you know it's i don't know i like neil young i like some of his songs back in the day uh he's good uh he you know we'll see what that has uh i don't know i don't know i haven't uh it'd be interesting to see what neil puts out at his age uh right now uh and another one that uh uh, he is uh, uh, putting out uh, in 2023 Bruce Springsteen, which he just sold a lot of uh, his whole catalog, uh, except for the new music he's releasing now. But uh, this past year, uh, he is putting out a five album box set, so uh, uh, material, and it's uh, mostly from the 90s. So uh, We'll see. It's all kinds of things out there. If you're a big uh, Springsteen fan, I mean, I liked uh, I like some of his stuff. I like the older stuff in the '70s, uh, in the '80s. Uh, it's okay, I guess. His biggest one there was "Born in the USA." I mean, it was an anthem uh, in the '80s around sports arenas and everywhere. But uh, I like the '70s stuff with um, Bruce the most. So, but. Uh, uh, if you're a big Springsteen fan, you'll be happy for that. And if you was one of the lucky ones to spend five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a ticket, uh, you'll 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 fork over the money for this box set. Well, I believe. Let me know, and let me know if you was one of them to spend that type of money on Springsteen. I'd be really it, be really interested to talk to you about that. Um, the Patchy Mode. I don't know if there's any big fans out there. They uh, are going to release uh, some music. You know, the uh, founding member, Andy Fletcher, he passed away in 2022. But, uh, you know, they have some material. And, uh, you know, they plan to release it in 2023. And a tour. So, uh, look out for Depatchy Mode, if anybody's a big fan of them. And, uh, you know, uh, our buddy here... Uh, Alice Cooper, he's putting out some new music here in 2023. Um, you know, I, I did like that. Uh, I believe it was called Detroit Sessions. Man, that last album. And it was his first number one album. But uh, it was really good. It really went back to the 70s uh, uh, type music. And it was the original members on there, too. So it was really good. I like it. Uh, but he, uh, you know, he said he has uh, 12 songs. They're together. You know, there's and, and all of these that I've announced here too. There's no set date list for it. Um, it it's just a, um, you know, it's saying they're going to be there sometime in 2023. They'll come out, and I, I tell you, Alice Cooper, as old as he is, what is he, 75, 76? This guy tours. Golly, I would, I would just guess. But I, I bet he does 200 shows a year. And uh, and he puts out albums. He guests. He he does uh, concerts and donates a lot of uh, his time and money for these charities. And and to tell you a story about the Alice Cooper, he was the first one that came out. And, you know, during COVID, that he had an insurance claim, and he paid his road crew. Now that's killer. I mean, he took care of his crew, and he said, "Hey, without that crew, these guys behind the scenes." They wouldn't be at each city every other night, and uh, I thought that was cool. And and he really told everybody else. He said these big bands out there, hopefully they're doing the same thing, taking care of their crew. But uh, I never heard anybody else step up to it. But Alice Cooper, he takes care. Of, he calls out his family. So uh, really good, kind gentleman too. If you ever meet him, very very good, very good. Um, going on, you know. Uh, we, we told you uh, earlier, uh, Guns N' Roses, is a, they got eight to ten tracks. Two of them epic, according to Slash, that they'll be doing, you know, releasing a track every two weeks. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. And, uh, and I don't know. That's all I, I can say about Guns N' Roses. Uh, going with the Kinks. Golly, that's the name of the past. They're going to be putting out 
uh, album in 2023. Uh, the Kinks, golly, they've been around for a long time. So if you're a Kinks fan, be ready for 2023. Some new music coming from the Kinks. George Clinton. Well, that's the name of the past, right? Oh, George Clinton. He is going to be putting out some new music in 2023. Uh, a lot of it is old, yeah, you know, but that's all right. If you're a fan, you'll like the old as good as the new, I believe. And, uh, you know, here's one, uh, two, uh, Bad Company. They look like they're going to uh, do some new music here in 2023. You know, I had a lot of things to talk about here. Not only Bad Company, but Paul Rogers himself. But uh, that will be really neat because uh, I've seen Paul Rogers on this tour. I've seen him with Jeff Beck. Oh, wow. And Wilson, hell of a show uh, that was there a couple summers ago. But uh, uh, Paul Rogers, I'm, I'm, you know, we talked about uh, Queen a little earlier there. They're go they're doing a tour. You know, Adam Lambert's going to be, they're going to try to release some new music too. But who was a fan of Paul Rogers and Queen? If you remember that back, oh, golly, it was a while ago, probably 15 years ago. Paul Rogers and Queen, and they put an album out, but it I, I didn't like it at all. I thought it was terrible, and I, I even didn't even like the, the concerts. I just, Paul Rogers is Paul Rogers, you know, he was great. They did the Bad Company, and then they do the, the Queen songs, but it just didn't sound right, him singing them old Queen songs in concert, and the, the album didn't sound good either. It just wasn't my cup of tea, but uh, let me know what you guys thought, man. Did you like Paul Rogers and Queen at that time? I'm going to say no, because it, it only lasted for a little a while and it was done and uh and i don't mind adam lambert on it now you know he does it's kind of like uh you know what did he win american idol i believe they found him on that he's a big queen fan um and he sound he does the songs justice uh you know old freddie's uh song so i mean it's and, and and i like that and it you know in the situation of having fred freddie died and and you know the band wants to continue on i have no problem with that but that paul rogers when they came in there that, that just stunk to high heaven it just it wasn't good at all i didn't i didn't like it that leave your comments if uh you liked it or what you think about it, you know, and, and even on, uh, the queen now with Adam Lambert, uh, let us know. Um, another one coming out is extreme. They've been back here, uh, since the pandemic broke and, uh, I liked extreme. They was a good band in the eighties, you know, you, you know, uh, their lead singer tried out, uh, Sharon, uh, he did the VH3, which, you know, Van Halen, uh, three, I liked it. I liked uh, I liked uh, Sharon on it. I didn't think it was bad. I liked the music on it. Uh, yeah, they was long songs, but I was okay with that. And uh, I thought it was really good. I really did. I, the only thing is it didn't sell well, right? Who cares on that? I mean, um, but I thought Sharon did a, a great job. I thought Eddie played some great guitar on it. You know, I, I thought it was good. Uh but uh, anyways, uh, moving, that's, a, that's it for that extreme news. That's all the uh, 2023 uh, bands that has, uh, came out and said they're going to have some new material. So, uh, yeah, we'll get on to some other news. Now we'll move on to some of the uh, good rock singers uh, that's made the 200... Uh, position list here uh, uh, going down we'll, we'll go down uh, just I mentioned the rock singers here uh, number 12 John Lennon he was came in at number 12 number 14 Freddie Mercury which golly he should be number one I think uh, number 26 Paul McCartney 32 David Bowie 52, Mick Jagger. 63, Robert Plant. 80, Chris Cornell. 82, Steve Perry. You believe that? Definitely a top five singer in my book. 
105, Eddie Vedder. Ooh, that's pretty high for him. I don't understand some of his vocals. 109, Roger Daltrey. Yeah, that's probably a good position for him. 112, Ozzy Osbourne. 129, Halford, Rob Halford. 134, Axel Rose. 165, Ronnie James Dio. That's kind of crazy. Another top five singer, I believe. And the number one metal singer of all time. Uh, 176, Iggy Pop, if you're an Iggy Pop fan. Uh, 181, Bob Seger, which I could think he could be up there in the top 50, I believe. And 199, Denzag. Glenn Denzag. So, uh, there's, there's a rock ones that made that 200 list. You got some more stories out here, you know, uh, David Lee Roth, he's, you know, he's doing his, uh, podcast. He's really, he's released that this past, past week, telling some stories that I, uh, had on a couple episodes, uh, before. And, uh, he was talking about, uh, Alex Van Halen a little bit here, um, uh, on his recent interview. And he was talking about how, uh, he had, uh, Oh, Alex Van Halen uh, put a threat against a concert promoter so they could get paid. I guess that was the thing. Uh, back in the day, they kind of handshake, agreed to a fee, and the promoters never paid that, possibly, is what it sounds like. And so he sent Alex Van Halen after him to get, you know, to get paid. But, uh, you know, a lot of them bands, they, you know, like Van Halen has a big, uh, uh, well, David Lee Roth and Eddie, Eddie was at a McDonald's in front of it and was eating hamburgers. I mean, that's all they played for back in the day when they was trying to make it, you know, was for food. It wasn't really much money. They was just trying to get out there, gig, get their, get their stuff together so they could uh, build that fan base out there and uh, sign a contract. So, uh Little news there. Still wondering why uh, he's in the news today. I mean, it's been all week uh, and last week. Uh, so I don't really don't know what old uh, David Lee Roth is planning. Uh, uh, you never know on him. I don't. I don't know. And and another interesting story came out on that on his uh, Eat 'Em and Smile uh, solo album with uh, Steve Vai, Billy Sheen. Uh, Billy has a pro DVD shot of that tour, the only one that's supposed to be out there. And uh, he said it isn't for him to, um, it's not his to put out, it's a David's. So uh, he's waiting for Dave to, you know, get back with him. You know, he'll send it to him. He wants to put it out there. And Billy, he was, he even, you know, more kind words to David, you know, they, he really appreciated what they did when them guys joined the band and they went out and toured there, uh, for that album. Cause, uh, you know, it promoted them to go on, leave that band, start their own and, uh, get their name out there. But that would be interesting to see. I'd, I'd like to see that pro shot of, uh, that Eat em and Smile tour. Cause, uh, Hey, Steve Vai is a hell of a guitar player, that's for sure. All right, and that will be all the news today. And uh, we'll see you next time on Metalhead Nation Garage. And let's get on to some news today. It's going to be 13 bands that maybe other, your friends or stuff, made you feel bad, you know, bad about listening to them. You know, we'll start it out. Uh, Limp Biscuit, not a fan of Limp Biscuit. Um, uh, yeah, just not a fan. So I could see people maybe making fun of me if I listen to Limp Biscuit. But I do know a good story about that. It involves Eddie Van Halen. Some after the two thousand four uh, tour and the breakup of it because it was a disastrous 2004 tour um uh, in between them 2005 2006 eddie hooked up with fred durst and went over to his home studio and was jamming with him and looking you know playing some music 
you know, one thing led to another, whatever. They put down some tracks and whatever. Eddie went on his way. Fred did his thing and, and went back. So, but after a month, month or two, Eddie had been trying to get his uh, equipment back, you know, his guitars, his amps, and everything he takes to record. Um, and couldn't get a hold of Fred or, you know, his manager was, you know, putting Ed off and stuff and made him mad. So Ed took his military vehicle over there, jumped the curb, landed in his front yard, went up to the door, beat on the door. Uh, Fred answered and a gun popped out. He, you know, put a gun to Fred's, uh, Durst's head and told him to get my equipment in my vehicle now. <laughs> so I do know that story behind there. Uh, so it's a crazy story, but back in them days, uh, you know, Ed was fighting cancer and was doing some, you know, uh, medicine that uh, kind of on that 2004 you seen he was a little he was a little out there but uh, another band Nickelback you know I like Nickelback they do have some ballads I really don't know what the thing is about Nickelback and why people don't like them uh, but uh, there's there's one there you know uh, so I don't know uh, Blackville Bridges, I do not, never listen to, so can't really, um, um, you know, uh, speculate on this or why anybody, uh, the, uh, uh, the vocalist is Andy Six, the, uh, son of Motley Crue, so, uh, maybe that has something to do with it, but, uh, Bullet For My ba Valentine, I don't know, I have listened to these guys, um, I don't know. And if you have any comments, leave that for them on these bands. I'm asking why people would, you know, give you a hard time for listening to them. My Chemical Romance, I've, I've heard some of their songs, you know. Uh, another one, uh, Poison, I don't know what that is. It, uh, they, they have some good hits. I like them. I think they perform, uh, they give a good performance uh, uh, when you go to see them. Uh, like them a lot. I like C.C. DeVille very much so. So I don't understand that uh, either. Uh, Good Chocolate. Uh, not too familiar with this. I have, you know, they, I have heard a couple of their songs. I know they're a little, they they, they seem like a little punky, you know, uh, to me with a little pop sound too. So uh, Good Charlotte, Charlotte. So if you got any, you know, hey, let me know about uh if you have any comments on these bands, let me know for sure. And then we got Creed. I don't know what the that is. Um, and and maybe some of this is because uh, uh, the people may think they're they're more of a uh, you know in line with the female audience. Uh, could be I don't know. Five Finger Death Punch. Uh, um, I don't know what the beef is with them. They do, I know they have some remakes of some good songs there, which didn't sound bad at all. So, uh, and, and, and maybe it's some political views that these guys have too. I don't know. I, I really don't care about their political views. I don't. I go to watch them as artists. You know, the same with a movie too. I don't want to hear movie stars' political views. I want to see their movie. Stain, which I like Stain. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about because uh, they, I like Stain. They put out some good rock and music. Um, and Puddle of Mud, <clears throat> that guy's out there. I like his music, though, but he, the lead singer there, it, they, he has some issues. Uh, so I, I think uh, he is the only original member left. But I do like some of their songs. They're, you know, Blurry, She Hates Me. Uh, you know, it's a... I like them. Good uh, 2000 band, but uh, uh, Fall Out Boy, yeah, they're okay. I'm not too big of a fan of them, so uh, I I could understand that a little bit. And, uh, and that'll be it. Uh, so let us know what you think about that in the comments. Hello, welcome to Metalhead Nation Garage. I'm Chris, your host. Hey, give a thumbs up and or subscribe to the channel. Hey, getting into some uh, music news today, and we're going to talk about the, these vinyl sales. Man, they're breaking records left and right anymore um, this this December during Christmas week. 
uh, they sold over 2.2 million vinyl records in the U.S. So, uh, wow, it's the largest sales for that that they really started counting in the 90s, since 1991. So, and they saw a 46% increase in sales, you know, to the week prior. So it's, uh, hey, this ain't going away, this vinyl sales. Um, and just see, you know, and which I think is really cool. You know, I I mean, I remember when I was younger going to the record store to get the uh, my album and things and know what I wanted. You know, I was looking for the music itself. Uh, for one, but that it just it was really cool, uh, you know, to see the covers uh, that the bands would put out, you know, knowing what they was going to do. That was a big thing for me, just to see, you know, hey, what Sabbath, what was they going to put on the front of the cover, you know, or uh, Van Halen and or Queen uh, and some of these uh, uh, bands that do that, uh, that would be their Iron Maiden, you know, they really had some cool cool covers uh on there uh you know uh death angel some of that overkill some of them uh, uh metal bands back in the uh 80s and things they would um they would really uh keep you guessing and you know when uh, the album came out and uh what they was going to put on it you know it really changed there in 1980 it, which was really cool uh, that's when Brian Johnson uh, joined ACDC and came out with Back in Black. And they just threw it out there with ACDC in a black cover. You know, so they, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the reasoning behind that, according to the band, is, you know, they didn't want the cover taken away from the music because they was very proud of that Back in Black. And so, uh, and, you know, hey, history made on that. Uh, millions of copies sold so i think it's a second best selling album behind michael jackson i believe so um and it was number one for a while uh um and then until michael uh passed him up but uh yeah really cool really cool but i wanted to know what some of you old timers on here thought and in the new generation too what is what is it for the new generation to go out to get this is it is, is it nostalgia you know i know what it was for me i just told you you know a lot of different things but what is it for this young group is it the the cool uh turntables they have now for them i know i know the different colors of the vinyl is a big hit for some and that's a big hit for me i like that different uh colors of the uh vinyls but uh let me know what you guys think man and uh you know hey anything everything's good you know if it uh it goes so and it seems to be taken off so uh the only bad thing is here i know i couldn't get some albums that i ordered because there's a there's a backlog, you know, I've, I've waited three or four months for some, still waiting, and I don't even know when I'll get them, or even if I get them, I may just, you know, get my money back and get it on, you know, I have it on digital, if I want it really bad, I guess I'll get it on the CD, but, uh, and another thing is coming out to them, cassettes, it ain't as big yet, but these bands are having that option on their website, so cassettes coming back, wow, just crazy, but I, I guess that's that old saying, right? What comes around goes around. Possibility there, and uh, but we'll get on to the uh, news, uh, rock news today. Kind of a little staying with the metal part of it. Uh, you know, there's a band, uh, Monster Magnet. They uh, formed in the in the late '80s, and uh, uh, you know, tore up the charts in the '90s. But uh, you know, they had a Several great hits. What I liked about it, um, uh, one of their big hits was Space Lord. But it's a it's a grooving band. It's different, you know. It's not like the Hair Nation back in the 80s. It's just a, a dirty, you know, grooving uh, music, you know. And nothing, nothing fantastic. It's just a good groove. Uh, vocals is nothing fantastic. Ain't going to stick out. But it just works all together, you know what I mean? Kind of... Uh, I don't know. I, I that's kind of the only way I could just a dirty raw type rock and roll and uh, really good, you know. And uh, but check them out. I know uh, got some feedback on some, you know, uh, putting these bands out here. Uh, 
on there and have you check them out and been getting some feedback that they like them. So uh, check these guys out because uh, they are they are good. They're announcing a tour here in 2023, starting off in May, do a couple shows here, and then they head over to Europe. So uh, uh, Monster Magnet. So be on the lookout. Uh, and if you haven't heard them, check them out. And uh, I tell you, you'll be impressed with it, especially with that Space Lord single. That is, uh, it is is really cool man uh good band good rocking band there and uh moving on to uh some other news here and it would be on uh we're staying with them around the 2000 era you know i talk a lot about the 60s and 70s through and some 80s in there and previously um you know at 90s talk a little bit about there but it's only about pearl jam red hot chili peppers there's there's not much action in that 90s uh yet uh i mean except for them too and we'll get back to that but we're hitting the 2000s now which kind of picked up and i like that better than that grunge don't, don't get me wrong i like the grunge there's a lot of grunge in in the 90s i like and I'll, I'll go back to it in, in another episode and concentrate on that. But uh, Nonpoint started out in 2000. A big, uh, you know, not a big band, I shouldn't say that. But, you know, they're in the, they're kind of in that um, new, uh, new metal category. Um, but uh, really a good band. Again, they start, kick it off in June, their tour. And then... Um, and then hit Europe, and then they come back to the States. But they, uh, you know, they was a um, uh, good grooving band, if you like the new metal, which is not bad. It's, uh, it's uh, I like it. It's kind of, uh, you know, it's not, you know, the death metal or hit me like overkill or, uh, you know, some of that hard driving. It's not like that. Uh I like them better than corn. I, I I would I would uh, put them in that part of it, and um, but uh, came out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida too. They um, you know they uh, really good solid solid band of the two thousand, and um, yeah, if you're out there, man, and you know just another band, you know. That, that came out, you know, Bullet With My Name, The Reckoning, the, uh, the big one was Alive and Killing in 2005. Very good band. Get out and, you know, get out and see them if you can, or check these guys out on your Spotify and let me know what you think of them, man. Uh, they, uh, again, and, and, and these bands I'm talking about, they're not flashy. They really, you know, they're, they're not a big headline name, but they're a good opening act and uh, th that, uh, that are really good and, you know, making their way. And um, here's another one, too, back from the 2000s, too. They're, they're getting ready to um, uh, do the tour, too, and it's called, uh, they're called uh, Fly Leaf. Really good. They're out of uh, Belton, Texas, 2002. You know, uh, they came, you know, going up the charts. They're mainstream rock right now, and uh, so... Uh, really good i mean they have some uh of the 2000s they had some uh songs out there again not gonna be your you know they're gonna be an opening act you know all around me i'm so sick fully alive is a great one you know again and sorrow but a good band good grooving band you know check them out uh, you know i like giving these guys these other bands you know a little bit of time a little bit of news especially when they're out touring and stuff and they're out touring and 2023 starting in uh, uh, the first quarter of this year so if they come around be on the lookout for them and again check them out on spotify and let me know what you think of them and then uh, last I'm, I'm sure you heard of this is a big band uh, in the 2000 is seether they're getting ready they are on uh, for a 2023 tour um uh, they start that, you know, they, they're they doing some uh, Europe tours first uh, at the Download Festivals in June, and then they'll make their way back to the States. And they're actually on tour right now, uh, too. Uh, but uh, Cedar, golly, man, they, they had some great songs, you know, uh, in the 2000s. They, uh, oh, my gosh. And uh, 
uh, broken, fake it, find a game remedy. Just a great band. I really like them. Uh, like the groove to it again, and they're not gonna kill you. It ain't gonna kill you flashiness or anything like that. Just a good grooving. The vocals ain't gonna stand out that much with you, but as a group, man, they're solid. So, uh, you know, be, if you see, you know, they're in your neck of the woods, check them out. And, and if you haven't heard of these guys, Spotify it and give us a comment on it and let us know. And uh, hey, that'll be it all for this. Uh, edition of Metalhead Nation Garage. We'll see you on the next episode.